Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Unapologetically Daphneek Podcast. My special guest today is... It's Tehran. Here, your energy is amazing. Ah, thank you. You know I gotta keep my energy up. Okay, today's question topic is, is society too emotional? Yes. Oh, oh, was I supposed to? Yeah, you supposed to answer. Oh, we're supposed to talk about it? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. Let's talk because about it. Clearly, clearly society is extremely emotional. That's all that drives society in the way we think is people's emotions. And a lot of times we find, especially as comedians, people feel just because they're offended means they're right. Yes. I feel like a lot of emotions now is based off of facts in people's minds. Because I feel some type of way, it's factual that nobody else should have to deal with this because it hurt me, it offended me. And it's like, bro, that's not, that's not life. It's not life. I don't think we lived like that 10 plus years ago. Well, we didn't. And that's what led us to act this way. So we grew up as the generation of, of, of kids, basically, this millennial, who were told your feelings count. And we took that as fact. Like, our feelings count more than anything else. If I feel something, then that must be the way it is. That is how it is. I felt it, therefore it is truth. And that's the, that's the interesting thing because the truth, the truth itself needs no belief. Emotions needs no truth. So I can feel sad just because I felt sad today. And that doesn't make it the world's truth. But unfortunately, that's how we are starting to acclimate society. If you're sad, then there must be something wrong. Whatever's wrong must be the truth. <laughs> yeah, that is so crazy that you, whatever is wrong must be the truth. Okay, because what is factual is two plus two is four. That's the fact, all right? Today, we can't base everything off of emotions because then it becomes everything's going to offend somebody else. Each group is going to be offended by another group. Some things I do believe is racial, is prejudice, is sexist, but some things I'm like, people are over-exaggerating a little bit. But that's the problem. Where do you draw that line? It's a slippery slope. So when we start labeling things as, well, this is factually racist, this is re factually prejudiced, bigoted, misogynist, sexist, whatever it is, well, then where does that slippery slope land? Because now we have, for example, the question of pronouns. I, I, you didn't call me the correct pronoun. I am offended. Even though you wouldn't ever be able to guess a pronoun, <laughs> that's the whole thing. We wouldn't be able to guess what pronoun you would like to go by. However, some people get very offended by that. And some people are offended by the people who are offended. And it goes on. And then the thing about it is I think we live in a society where everybody is trying to correct someone else's feelings of how they're offended or how they want to be treated that they end up offending other people, right? Because now you have this thing where they have all gender restrooms. So I went to a university and I did stand up, right? And the bathrooms were uh, actually labeled all gender. And I don't want men to come into the restroom while I'm in there. I'm not okay with that as a woman because I have a period. I could be on my period. I could be doing all types of shit in the bathroom, just having what a cramp up. What do you do up. in the bathroom? Hey, I mean, we, be, we be in there using a whole bunch of toilet paper. That's oh, just I what women do. We use a whole this. bunch of toilet paper. Oh, when, I know. When you're bleeding, you need the toilet paper. You know what I mean? When you're in there because your cramps and your stomach and your whole body is falling apart and you got the shits. I don't want a man walking in there. I don't want to go out of the stall and see a man and just like, oh, oh, hey, oh, yeah, that was me in there. Like, I still want to have my femininity. You know what I mean? I don't want to be embarrassed. But we grew, we went, we went through an era where that offended some people that they weren't allowed to use certain restrooms. So now we have to open everything up to everyone. And it's like, even when you try to correct something, you're still messing up something else over here. Right? Sure, but at some some points, we need to just simply relearn things. There is no reason why he and she are the only pronouns. If someone wants to be called they, we can simply call them they. If I don't mind calling them they. You're exactly. Right. I don't care exactly. about pronouns. I just don't want people that In identify identify as a man like okay i understand you identify as a woman right that's a slippery slope but i understand that that's your identification but you just got regular now they're just trying not to offend anybody that they have men who identify as men him he just in the bathrooms with she and her at those points there should be singular bathrooms for people who don't want to be around anybody there should be an alternative and an option because on the flip side of just because you're offended doesn't mean you're right. The flip side is just because you're offensive doesn't mean you're right either. 
And we have that in comedy a lot where comedians c complain, well, I said something offensive and someone got offended by it, then obviously they're stupid. They're too stupid to understand what I said. And it's like, no, no, Jack, be funny. No, be funny. You can make it happen. And so with, with your situation with the bathroom, there should be an alternative. That's the thing. We live in a world where we are now open to alternatives. That's what makes it important. Alternatives, right? But what happens when you don't get those alternatives? Because now the alternatives is just like, okay, this things have always been this one way and we're going to change it to make it this way. And then now that's the new option and that's the only option. And it does. It has to. It could be more than the restrooms. I'm not sticking to a restroom. But the restroom is a visible. It's tangible. Yes, it's something you it's can, something see. We can see. Exactly. Right? Because a lot of times it's just emotions, and yeah. people are feeling a certain way. You can't touch emotions, but you can touch the restroom. You shouldn't. Obviously, you don't want COVID and or herpes, but yeah. you can touch the restroom. The concept is what you're bringing up is very simple. It's you want to be identified as comfortable. Right. You want to be comfortable and you don't feel comfortable if other people are in your space. You don't feel should be in your space. Well, I don't. It's not that I don't feel like a man shouldn't be in my space. I love men. I love men. I, I, we, men we are got beautiful. it the first time. We got it. OK. Uh, they're yeah. absolutely gorgeous. Not all men. <laughs> OK. Just the men that I like. Oh, OK. So that's just a small selection. Yeah. Right. But even I remember one time I was in a writing class, right? And they had an open restroom and my boyfriend could be in the restroom. I could be in the restroom. He said he even to himself, he said, well, I don't feel comfortable going in there. Women are in there. You know, you guys are in the bathroom and I'm just walking in. That could be a little intimidating. I'm six, four, you know what I mean? And now I'm in here in the bathroom. You that could cause some type of alarm for people. You know what I mean? Minus the fact that he was black, but you get what I'm saying. But you see what I'm saying. So I'm not okay with that aspect of just like everybody walks into this one open space with several stalls. They also do that at YouTube too, at the YouTube space. It, all men and women just use the same restroom. It doesn't matter about your binary. binary. Uni, yeah. Unisex it's bathrooms. Just unisex, yeah. Exactly, because a lot of people don't understand sex and gender are two different things. Yes, absolutely. Sex is the organ that yeah. prescribed you. Gender is the identif identification portion. Absolutely. And so. I can understand how that can make you uncomfortable. I personally would, I would just simply say there should be an alternative to that situation. There should be bathrooms. Individual where, stalls. Individual stalls. Yeah. They have those in a lot of places. People want to change their babies or whatever yeah. it is. And what I loved about the YouTube space is that the, the doors were actually sealed up. So you can't see because when you go to most restrooms, um, you could actually see through the cracks. The cracks. You see what I'm saying? So if somebody really wanted to look at oh, you. Oh, we've all there, been there. Yeah. We've all been there. When you're in the bathroom, it's like you're holding the door like, don't look. Don't, <laughs> don't, look, don't, don't look, look at me. me. Don't look at don't me. Don't look through that little yeah. space. Even when you were in high school, people yeah. were always looking over. Remember yeah. the stalls where you could actually step you on your tippy toes over, and look over at people? But that's just something that I'm just like, whoa. And then I just realized that everything is a offensive to someone i think that is it can reality be. it can be it can be you you see this especially in the day and age where people want to relive the past where offensive things were the norm and they see this on television if you watch a lot of television shows now you look at them like it's offensive right you can watch something like i love lucy I Love Lucy, which is the most G-rated show of all. Ricky Ricardo threatened to beat her ass 14 times a show. Lucy? Like, oh, yeah. He used to be he like, Lucy? He was a womanizer. Oh, yeah. He used to beat her. I mean, he was a womanizer in real life. But on the show, he was definitely a woman beater. Like, he definitely was. But it's crazy Chris Brown. looking back at that. Um, I didn't see it as offensive and I didn't even take note to that that was actually happening that he was low-key threatening her but now that I look at it in this day and age because my um, <laughs> emotion is fact that is offended I'm offended it is offensive honeymooners <laughs> to the moon Alice to the moon like there's a lot that goes on there that emotion space however now as people of color black people we realize how emotions and facts can overlap as well. Mm -hmm. We saw that happen with BLM. A lot of quote unquote white people or non-black people felt that black people are too emotional. Mm -hmm. You're being emotional. No, that's not the truth. Racism isn't the truth. It's not as bad as you think. So what would you say to those people? That's an emotion that we feel is fact. I would say that it's a lot of factual stuff that happens to us, right? Like the uh, Welfare Reform Act, the um, Prison Reform, uh, 
as our societal, social, socially, economical uh, state. All of that stuff is fact. So when we complain or when we outrage about what's going on in an emotional way, it's still based off of facts, right? We still have it where you have, we're undereducated. Our schools are underfunded, right? Um, we also have it where uh, we're, we don't get paid as much. Like those are facts. So especially with that, black women. Yeah. Especially black especially, women. Especially, but we're highly educated, right? So with, when you have facts and then those facts turn off of emotion, then absolutely, that is a society that may be seemed as emotional, but it's based off of facts. All the facts of them putting crack in our um, neighborhoods, the economical, the redlining of housing and stuff like that, that's all facts. So when we stand up, it may seem like we're being emotional by marching and protesting and no longer standing for this shit, but it's based off of facts. But some shit people out here are doing, they just don't like your joke. It's not based off of facts. What group of people do you feel gets offended the most? easy white women <laughs> white women are the most offended and it half of the time it don't have shit to do with them i understand if it's a feminist movement or it has something to do with a hashtag me too or something like that then you have the right to be offended but i had a white woman get mad recently on a laugh factory joke i said broke dick was like street meat you know the kind that mexican people sell with the bacon wrapped around it it tastes good as hell in the moment, but in two days, it's going to mess up your credit. And she said that this was an offensive joke, and why would I call anybody Mexican? I was like, and then Mexican people actually started to comment and say, if we're Mexican, and most Mexican people are the ones owning the hot dog stands in, in California, that's susceptible. We call ourselves Mexican. That's not a derogatory term. We're proud of where we're from. And they started to correct her. She was like, well, my boyfriend is Guatemalan, and he doesn't need to. It's Latino. She needs to say Latino X. It's, just, it's Latinx uh, to that oh. white woman. I just want to <laughs> let her. <laughs> she might have said Latinx. Maybe I added the A. I added the A. I did that on my own. Sometimes, you know, when you, you look it back and y'all have a photographic memory, I'm just going yeah. off and just... Uh. So she was offended she for was a offended. group of people that she's not involved in. She's not in. a part of. I, 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 I see that where, a lot. Where was that offendedness when slavery was happening? When, when was that, Carol? Yeah. Where's that offendedness when we're not getting reparations? Where's that at? Like, where's that energy? Where's that at? same energy? Yeah, and especially the ones that date outside their race, they feel like they can really be offended on a topic and be dead ass wrong. Okay. Because if Hispanic people, and then it's not like I said Florida. I went to Florida or New York and called people Mexican. I think that geographically in Los Angeles, if we say Mexican, we're geographically right, right? You got Guatemala. This is as basically well. North Mexico. Yeah, it is. It, it and really is. And, and and I was talking about L.A. Specifically, you know, specifically Mexican people. But when I'm I'm from South Florida, when I see Hispanic people or Latinos, Cuban, Cubans, uh, Costa Ricans, sure. uh, Venezuelans. So you have to be a little more specific there, right? Dominicans. So, but L.A. If I said that, and and it was crazy that Mexican people came to my defense. Like it's not crazy. It's understandable. They're like, yo, that's not offensive. Like, who are you? But it's it's crazy because she's standing up for a group of people. Was like, why are you telling us how to feel? We don't feel this way. Yeah, that happens. You know, Ruben Paul. Do you know Ruben Paul? <laughs> yeah. Okay, Ruben Paul is uh, he's at the Laugh Factory performing on my show, and he does a lot of jokes about Haiti. Yeah. Okay. So there's a, a a wonderful white woman of color who is there. What's a white woman of That's color? That's what I call white women who are super susceptible to standing up for other people. <laughs> oh, they're without, white women of color. Without provocation. Okay. Like no one asks you to come in. They're white women of color. Like they <laughs> they start adding themselves into other people's fights. Uh, colors. And, and they okay. start saying like, exactly. We're we're under we're minorities too. It's like white women are not minorities. Okay. <laughs> they need to stop that narrative. That narrative needs to stop. So. Nothing against white women, but there is a false narrative that comes in when you were speaking on emotional status. I believe also, as you do, they are the hyper emotionally aware. So there's a white woman there and Ruben starts talking about Haiti and she's getting visibly uncomfortable. She's coughing. Oh, oh, oh. And then finally, she's like, that's not funny. She stands up in the comedy show at the Laugh Factory. She's, that's not funny. I am dating a Haitian man, and she puts <laughs> her there? boyfriend, his boy, her boyfriend, trying to, who's trying to like hide his face, and she goes, "I spent two months in Haiti, serving the underprivileged people. Do not speak of these people in such a manner." And Ruben just gave it a second and goes, "Bitch, I'm Haitian." <laughs> and 
that was the case. And everyone died laughing because he's like, clearly she missed the part where he discusses that he's talking about his own family. Like, how are you standing up for the person who's the who is the subject of this? How are yeah. you standing up for him? That's something that emotional status of society does is other people telling you how you're supposed to feel about something. That comes up. Where I, I'm emotional for you. That's how emotional we are in society right now. I'm emotional for you. I'm sad or upset for you. You're not upset. Mm -hmm. No one should use the N-word because... Oh, you know what? That's something that really makes me mad. When white people tell us not to use the N-word. Um, and then they try to proclaim like they created the N-word and they didn't. The N-word came from Niger. Um, so it was a derivative of that, right? Uh, another thing that pisses me off about it is the fact that they don't want us to use the word, but they stripped us of our culture. And to me, when we had to rebuild our culture, that was something that now became a part of our culture and who we are as a people, right? The N word is just a part of our culture now. We, 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 well, I noticed like my friend, she's from Haiti, right? And um, she doesn't use the N word. Uh, very rarely. I caught her the other day. I said, girl, you must be really mad. You just said the N word. She was like, girl, did I say it? She was like, I didn't mean to say it. I was just really irritated at this man and how he's treating me right now. And I was like, oh, I said, because she told me that she doesn't normally use it because it's not culturally their word. Like, they don't use it there. Some of the ones that do use it is because they more so Americanized. They American hip-hop. Hip-hop yeah. also made it very popular. Very popular, right? But when you strip somebody of their name, their heritage, their culture, you bring them to an unknown land, which I falsely believe that as well. Uh, I believe that black people were already here. A lot of them were. So whatever you, whatever we were stripped of who our identity, right? So with that being said, we rebuild the culture and hip hop is a part of our culture and that N word and everything became a part of who we are. And you cannot now tell us that we can't use the word. Like that's just like me telling, uh, I feel like a Jewish person, they can't maybe talk about the Holocaust. Like that's a part of their culture, right? They're allowed to speak on that. They're allowed to talk about their experience, right? And if they wanted to flip it into something else, then that's okay. But the problem is, is that white people shouldn't tell us not to use the word. Just be okay that you don't use the word, that you can't use the word. That's, and it's, that but they can't ties do that. back into the privilege. They can't do that because they're not used to not being able to do anything or something that they want to do, right? And That's since they're not used to that, when they see that someone else is doing it, and I'll, and I'll give an example. I play basketball, mm -hmm. and I've noticed that there are a lot of times where when I'm playing with a specific group of people, especially if they're upper-class white people, mm -hmm. when they say the ball is out, street ball, we kind of regulate ourselves. When they say the ball is out, they play as if the ball went out. Like, there's no argument. They're just like, it went out. And you're like, wait, no, it didn't. And they're just like, nope, I said it's out, so it must be out. They're so used to being in charge that they don't even realize in that situation, mm -hmm. there's a conversation. Yeah. There, you can't just say it's out and just because you said it, that must have been the truth, right? That happens a lot. And when it comes to the foul, they're always quick to call a foul. But if you call foul, they're like, that wasn't a foul. <laughs> so you realize when something hurts you. You realize when something has happened to you. Same thing happens in society. With the N-word, for example... They're not used to not being told what not to do. So when something is regulated as such, they feel offended. Because to the privileged, equality will always feel like oppression. So because they're so privileged, they always, they'll, they'll feel sensitive to that subject. They'll fe feel sensitive. Well, if, then no one should use it. Why? That's not how that works. You know who gets a vote on that? Daphne gets to vote on that. Absolutely. Daphne's Haitian friend gets to vote on that. Tehran gets to vote on that. Ruben gets to vote on that, right? Yeah. Whoever's in this conversation gets to vote on that. You don't get that vote. Absolutely. To you, it's not your vote. I don't care about your feelings. And it's feelings, right? Not facts. So here's another thing, too. Remember the whole thing about calling white women Karens, the white women that would get outraged at a specific situation and just show their ass, you know, get in people's face, maybe spit, cough, do all types of crazy stuff. It was a, something going around where uh, they had started a movement saying that calling them Karen is equivalent to calling them the N-word. And I was just like, where are you getting that from? Because you being a Karen is how you act, right? We're not just going around calling as a society, white women, oh, that's just walking down the street, just minding their business. I might behaving. be, I might do that. Oh, I might real? just call them Karen. Okay. I might call every white woman Karen. However, the concept is how many Karens have been lynched when someone called them Karen? Yeah. And the answer is zero. Zero. 
The answer is zero. And how many Karens uh, can still go through society without, uh, if they behave in a certain way, right? If you meet a white woman that's absolutely nice, and which is it's a lot of people that are nice and genuinely good people, you don't have the urge to call them a Karen. But because of the color of my skin, I can't change my, the color of my skin. You can just change your behavior, right? That's a great point. Karen. <laughs> like, I yeah. just feel like... Got that care? I hope someone took note of that. Act like your name. Exactly. If your it, name is Sue, act like a Sue. Be a nice, pleasant person. <laughs> it does come, but it does Don't come back to that people. emotional status yeah. again. This hyper awareness of how I feel all the time. This is how I feel. And it's interesting that men have been trying to place that label on women through generations, mm -hmm. basically making it sound like women especially in a heteronormative sense, women are the ones who are always feeling things and men are tired of it. When the truth is, men out here in these streets 10 times more sensitive than the women. And you see this all the time, the 10 times more sensitive. The girl walks by, hey girl, hey girl, oh yeah, F you then, bitch. That's why you ugly anyway. Exactly, it's well like, then you're well, sensitive. I was cute two minutes ago. Exactly, it's like you're sensitive. Yeah. Your ego was hurt for how But men second. are taught to hide emotions yeah. at an early age. But I think we live in a society where it's really not a gender thing. Everybody's emotional as hell. It is. And because now they have the platform to be emotional. Back in the day, when you were an emotional person, only the people in your immediately immediate circle and a couple of people would talk shit about you at your yeah. job or the bitch school ass you went Brad. to. You knew yeah. bitch ass Brad. You knew a bitch ass Brad. <laughs> but now bitch ass Brad can go on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, Clubhouse. Can, Clubhouse. And they can Start reach rooms. now thousands to millions of people depending Other if they go viral. They can and, and now they start a whole coalition of bitch ass brats. And now they have a voice and now they their voice is factual. Because they're all saying it, and that's the thing, is in we we are so used to democratic society, especially in the Western world, where you feel like the majority when it's actually a very loud minority. It's yeah. a very loud minority in most of the cases. When a bunch of people say something, then it must be true. That's not actually true. That's something you have to be aware of. When a bunch of black people are telling you that racism exists, maybe listen to them because we have all had similar experiences without talking to each other. Yeah. When a bunch of bitch ass brads start telling you about something, one of them went through something and then the rest are just, well, I would feel the same if that happened to me. <laughs> I'm on that bandwagon too. So this is what's going on. Yeah. Like, we're all going to be in cells together. We're all going to be this kind of person together. And that's something we need to be careful. Facts isn't majority rule. Wrong is wrong even if everyone is doing it. And right is right even if nobody is. And that's the thing about facts. We have to d disseminate and discern between facts and emotional fiction. Right? So people get memes. They see a meme and they think, oh, well, I know everything now. I, I read a meme. I read half an article on this subject. I'm an expert. It's like, no, you're not. No, you're not. They're actual experts. Listen to the actual expert. What is the actual expert expressing to you? What is that person saying to you? Because your emotions has no bearing on this fact. It does not. It, I don't care how you feel. Men lie. Women lie. Numbers don't lie. But now we live in a world where numbers lie, too, because we manipulate numbers all the time to make you feel the way we want you to feel. Yeah, now we live in a society, too, where if you don't like something... Or you choose not. I, I see. It's another thing, right? It's a fine line between things. If you try to spear hate or violence towards a particular thing or a person or a group of people that you don't like, I have a problem with that. But if you just simply say, "Hey, this is in my life, and this is not something I'm okay with," nowadays you're attacked for that, right? Because you have a group of people who's like, "What? You don't like us? You don't? You don't buy with what we're doing? You don't like how we behave?" Fuck you! And they really want to come after you. And now their emotion has become fact, right? We keep coming back to this, right? But that's, I mean, that's the concept, yeah. is that emotion is fact. You know, it's something that my father used to hate the show Married with Children. Did you ever see Married with Children? Yeah, I used to love that show. My father hated that show. Why? He just didn't like it. He thought it was in poor taste. He didn't like how Al used to treat Peggy. He didn't like 
the the sense of Al humor. did treat Peggy bad, yeah. and uh, Peggy, it was like she needed a job. She needed dick. Like the whole <laughs> thing. She's like, Al, can we? And he's like, No, not tonight, Peggy. It's like. Do you think Al was a? Yeah, Al wasn't trying to get it. It's like I remember people. Wait, because like, Al never Al tried it. Peggy could get it. Like Al, Al never tried to do it. Al never tried to hit on any other women. Maybe Al was on the down low. He did. He did though at the shoe thing. He would just look at women. He would look at women. It was uh, Marcy Darcy's husband that used to get up with other women, but Al used to just talk to other women. He used to talk. But my father hated that show. You know what my father did when he hated that show? What? He changed the channel. <laughs> he literally just changed the channel. That was his solution to not liking Mary. He didn't start the I Hate Mary with Ch Children and Coalition. He didn't go out and try to gather other people who hate Mary with Children. He didn't try to get it canceled. He didn't do any of that stuff. He just simply changed the channel. And a lot of times, that could solve so many problems in society if we just simply change the channel. Just change the channel. If you don't like something, then don't pay attention to it. You don't like the Kardashians? Very simple. Don't pay attention to the Kardashians. Boom. Problem solved. All of them stop being billionaires the day we stop paying attention to them. I agree. We should just stop. But that's not, that's not realistic for people, right? They want to be heard. We're in a society now where people want to be heard and because of the internet, they can be heard. And not only can they be heard, they can find like-minded people like them. Because back in the day when we lived in a little small town, you found one or two other people that was like you and then after a while when you didn't start a whole group of people or hate train, you just stopped and you lived life and you went back to normal society and did things the way everybody else did. But on the flip side, it is good. We saw that once again with the BLM yeah. movement. We're watching that right now with stop asian hate when groups of people come together good things can happen change can happen we saw that with the lgbtq community people forget 10 years ago lgbtq could not marry one another mm. they legally could not get married in this country this progressive country that we live in it took everybody that's true to come together and be like why and there's still people who get offended by that so that's when something going back to what you said but is then, emotional steeped in fact. But then also you talked about majority people. If you said if majority of people are saying something, maybe we need to listen, right? So with the LGBTQ community, uh, uh, black people, Asian people, that's majority group of people saying, hey, man, stop what you're doing. You need to pay attention of what we're going through because we need change. That's different than someone that's just outraged because they think that you shouldn't say something about Haitian people. And I think because um, these movements have created so much change, the collectives, the mass of people that deserve and need change, that it, it gives everybody else a voice to think their little minute shit that they don't like or they dislike or is feelings is now facts as well and can evoke some change, right? So now, because I went over to an underprivileged, how disrespectful is it to call Haiti underprivileged? I mean, it is. I have. You've been to Haiti. I've been there. It's a, hey, like, I've been there. But she didn't have to say it. She didn't have Because to say her it. people is the reason why it's underprivileged, there we right? Go. There we go. So don't go over there acting yeah. like you just helping the needy and everybody's restricted. There's some powerful people coming. Why Clef John come out of Haiti? Yeah. So it's some people that's coming up out of there, right? Yes. My friend owns several properties and houses, you know? So with that being said, <laughs> I think that's offensive. Where that's, is she at? Because I want to call her job. Slope. Exactly. The slippery slope of what is offensive, what is emotional, why you should have the emotion. And I, and I keep going back to something you specifically said. If the emotion is steeped in fact, there's a conversation. But a lot of times this emotion is not steeped in fact. In fact, the emotion is changing the narrative of what is. Yeah. People are now being saying that two plus two is four is racist or it's prejudiced or it's sexist. And I'm, I'm upset by the fact that two plus two equals four. And that goes on all sides of that spectrum. All sides of the spectrum. I've seen it in the black community too where there are things where people are emotional. And it's like, mm, that's not because you're black. That's because you had 100 kilos on you. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> ah, you it. have choices. You, <laughs> exactly. Like, let's not. You don't want to stop going to basketball practice. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's a real conversation that happens. Yeah. That happens. Now, the now what needs to be brought up is, well, why was there not a white guy who was stopped as well? 
That's that's and why it when exactly. the white guy was stopped, he didn't get the same amount of time. Exactly. And why he got a movie and Clint Eastwood starred in that movie called The Mule. And the whole thing about that movie was how this guy moved drugs for 50 years and didn't get stopped. That movie was literally about white privilege and no one understood that. Like he's a white guy who was moving drugs, and then when he did get caught, he only got like five years or ten years and got a movie deal out of it. That never happens. How where's the big Meech movie? You know? Okay, still waiting on it. Exactly. So that's 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 the conversations we need to have when it comes to the space. But that emotionalism, that emotional concept of where I feel something so it must be true, mm -hmm. that should only be relegated to faith in God. Because other than that, I don't give a fuck about your feelings. I don't. Your feelings do not have bearing on a fact, especially when it's something that has proof behind it. I will change my mind if I see a paper. I will change my mind if I see studies. But if you're telling me, oh, well, I feel that, I, I can't even, we shouldn't even continue this now. I feel that unless we're dating, unless we, unless we are having sex, I really don't really need to know what you're feeling. And in fact, even if we are having sex, it's still a con. What level are we having? Like, where is the level of our sexual encounter? Okay, so with that being said, what is the future of this society? Because I think another thing too, right? So now you have this whole thing now where if you do uh, feel a certain way and you can get enough people on your side to feel, we're, we're not talking about the whole situations with the LGBT, the black community, the Asian people. We're not talking about those situations where you have a collective group of people that are being targeted or are experiencing something and they need help. So we're not speaking of that. We're just speaking of the average person that goes on there and starts a little hate train on somebody and get a collective amount of people to join on that train so what is the future of this and here's what i think right because we're now in a time where it's cancel culture exists where people feel like they can be the judge and jury over every single thing that someone does right uh we've seen it happen with kevin hart right uh, it, how many movies have we watched old movies where it was like tons of gay jokes and stuff like that but we choose to target this one person are we going to pull all those movies down as well no we have to progressively hold people uh, acknowledge what you what you said and what you did you apologize and we have to move on past it that we're now in a different time where people have to be held accountable in a way of just acknowledging that, yo, that might have been something of the past, but progressively we need to move forward. So with that being said, right, now that you got all these people that can just join in and create their own thoughts and everybody needs it, what is the future of it? And with this whole cancel culture and people being the judge and jury, I think we're limiting our freedom of speech now. That's no longer going to exist in the future, right? People are never going to be able to feel how they truly want to feel or be who they truly want to be because you have so many people that can quickly uh, tweet or something and write something or verbally make a video and say, cancel that person, right? So are we, and if it gets are we as a group of people taking away our own freedom of speech? That's an interesting point of view. I will go back to the concept of the word nigger. I don't want to live in a world where people are not allowed to say the word nigger. I want to live in a world where people don't want to. There's a difference. That comes down to choice. I want to live in a world... And when you say that, do you mean black people or do you just I mean, mean derogatory? I mean in general. I mean okay. people... When white people are like, oh, why aren't we allowed to say it? I want to live in a world where white people just don't want to say it. Absolutely. It, it, it's their, it's, they understand that choice. They understand it's inappropriate. And respectfully decline to use that word on their own volition. They decide not to. Not because we force them to do so. Not because it's mandatory. Not because they're hiding it which is really what happens a lot of times is people are, they're super cognitive and aware to the point where now when people say crazy things, I'm like, what you just saw was 10%. That was the iceberg tip of what they really say when they're in private. Because if they said that on television or if they said that on Facebook or posted that on social media and they're aware of the repercussions, then what do you think they really feel? Now we're just teaching people to hide. I do think, however, the future, a lot of people think the past is bright and the future is bleak. I think the future is bright. I think that there's an entire generation of children being raised and born now who are so sensitive and they don't realize that that's not just the norm. It's, it just is for them, that they're not going, they're really not going to see color in a good way. They're really not going to see differences between men and women and LGBTQ and they're going to respect everybody because that pendulum swings even though right now it's on the far side, it'll swing right back until it's in the middle. And that's where it becomes just normal. 
And we've seen that happen with, with black society. If you had spoken to somebody, if you had asked my grandmother and told her there was going to be a black president in 1965, you told her there was going to be a black president in 50 years, she would, she would never, she would lose her mind. She'd that's be like, that's right. impossible. But you saw that pendulum, the huge backlash against desegregation and civil rights. The huge backlash. And but then the pendulum flung. And now we just got to keep pushing that pendulum. We got to keep so much pushing go. that pendulum, right? We got so much but more to go, but we've gone very far as well. We have so much more to go, and we've gone very far. So with the way things are going, right, what about that group of people that the pedophiles, right, that say, oh, I was born this way. I was born attracted to children. So when do we get to say what's right and what's not right? Or is that something that will lead in the future where we have to accept people that like children and want to have sex with children? Because I, I just, it's hard for me to believe that certain things can be okay and certain things can't be okay. Pretty soon we'll have to let everything be open, right? No. And this is where okay. the questions of legality and morality overlap. Morality is actually a very finite subject. What we do is we add superficial morality on top of it, where we've decided, oh, sex is taboo, this is taboo, this is okay, mm -hmm. this is not. But the morality is murder is wrong. That, that's, murder is wrong when it's civilians especially, right? So, Wait, murder is not always wrong, right? Because legally, if someone is in the state of California, if I, I have a gun in my home, right? If someone is in my home and they're trying to attack me or do something, as long as they, they're facing towards me and I kill them towards me, right? At first, I have to try to do a warning shot, right? Boom, boom. I can hit over on the wall. Shoot, right? yeah. Boom. Then hit them, right? And kill them. Then that's... By the way, if that ever comes up, shoot the person first and then shoot up in the ceiling. They'll never tell which one happened Okay, first. first. Okay. Just to let you know. Thank you. Whatever. What do I know? Okay. <laughs> allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, allegedly. 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 Yeah. Um, but with that being yeah. said, but if that person has turned their back to try to run after they've seen the gun and I hit them in the back, then now I could be prosecuted. Well, trust me. I, I know this yeah. very well. And then also you have the fact of the matter that um, even if I do kill this person that's coming towards me, they actually can now uh, sue me, their family can, for several... Uh... Ca California is very difficult. This is where my law background comes in handy. Is California has a whole different system of torts when it comes to civil lawsuits, which is why insurance cost is so high, mm -hmm. because liability in the state is un unquestionably high. Yeah. You are correct. There's this, there's this case in California where someone breaks into someone's house to steal stuff, falls down their stairs, and sues them for the lack of safe, safety in the stairs. So which brings me to the point is California recently uh, passed a law for pedophilia now that you could date someone within 10 year range, I believe. So if someone is 15, the person, it's up to the judge now to make the decision. Honestly, first of all, I think that's wrong. Second of all, that's been going on in the hood for a long time. So we need to fix that too. Like I people mean, forget Belly. Remember Belly, the first scene? DMX was getting <laughs> head from a 16 year old. I mean, and nobody put, said anything. But don't like, just put that in the, on the hood. No, um, it's not white people hood. is incest. Yeah. Um, it's going on in it's all cultures. On. So it's it ain't just on. black people. A hundred percent. Yeah. I never even said black people. Said I just said hood. hood. But, oh, but. there's a lot of white people that live in the hood, <laughs> Daphne Springs. This is the thing we need to realize. It's like when you go to when you go to places like Alabama and Mississippi and uh, yeah. Idaho and North I Dakota. We call, and South see, Dakota, I thought black people they we call have black people too. the hood and, and all, white people the trailer parks. Is that what it is? Yeah. Well, in the in the system which I speak of, the concept is that legality morality question, right? Pedophilia is immoral because a child doesn't have a choice. You're not old enough to make a decision. But some of them are saying that the children want it. I can understand why they are saying this. Yeah, but I'm just saying. A, a lot I'm of rapists speaking, say that too. Yeah. She said no, but she really wanted it. The concept is pedophilia is not an acceptable, acceptable form of, of sexuality, much like, much like necrophilia and bestiality, simply because the other partner mm -hmm. does not have a choice in the matter. Yeah. That, that is why it's I unacceptable. Agree. Consensual sex... There's, there's a situation right now in San Diego where there are three gay men mm -hmm. who have adopted children. They, they actually inseminate women oh, and yeah, adopted children. Oh, yeah, we talked to him on Clubhouse, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's something where all three consenting 
legal partners are involved in a throuple, that is not any of our business. Yeah. That is something we need to stay out of. They're not doing anything wrong. They're not doing anything legal. And to be very honest, two of them are doctors. The other one is a zoologist. They are financially capable more than most parents to take care of these children Absolutely. on a financial level. And they're also extremely wonderful people, which means they have the emotional intelligence to do so as well. That's something we need to stay out of. Once again, three consenting adults, right? So the concept is, what is an adult? Is an adult 18? Is it 16? Is it 21? That's something that we can decide as a society. But I'll know something. It's not six. Okay. It's not 12. Okay. So that's the conversation. Because uh, the pedophilia. pedophile is uh, someone that is pre-adolescent. So that would be the ages of 13. Uh, they call it something else when it's like uh, 16 or 17. Statutory rape. Those uh, are statutory yeah, terms. Yeah, statutory rape. But exactly. it's another P word that, yeah. that goes for that Whatever one it is. like, and, and there are situations where if you're in high school and I'm in high school and I just turned 18 and you're 17... That's still It's called the Romeo and Juliet law. Exactly. Cuz I asked my mom, I said, "Ma, you were you got pregnant at 16 and you had me a we got to your 17th birthday and my daddy was 19 turning 20." She was like, "No, baby. She was like it was a sweetheart law. You could date someone or be with someone within 3 years." Within 3 years. Yeah. And by the way, just to let you know, in the United States, because people love talking about this in other cultures mm -hmm. and Middle East and things like that, there are parents that sign their children over to men because once you're married it's legal and so oh, they can sign away their young children and they do in that america? in america there are about something like 1500 underage weddings in wow. the united states and we don't talk about that because we don't like to know about these i things. didn't even know about it to but, talk about it yeah but that's what i'm saying so but as far as pedophilia goes that's that's not part of the slippery slope the slippery slope stops at immorality and legality that's where the slippery slope stops. And I don't think pedophilia will ever be accepted simply because, once again, it comes down to, it's not even about your emotions. It's about the fact. The fact is, the other person is unable to consent. The same way that I'm unallowed to sell myself into slavery. That is not something that I'm allowed to do. Oh, I can't do that? Yeah, you can't do that. What if somebody offered me $5 million to sell myself into slavery? That happens in Dubai, but that's still not... So, oh. Yeah, you're oh, still that, supposed that's to be able just to called, leave. In Dubai, that's called just selling pussy. <laughs> um, that's what that is. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's the thing. Once it stops at that, but as far as the conversation of where does it go from here, do we just start accepting everything? No, but is there room for us to accept a lot more? And the answer is yes. The answer is yes. We can accept other people. Once again... LGBTQ community is a perfect example. Once again, mixed marriages is an example. Until Loving, the ruling of Loving, we didn't, it was illegal until the 70s basically to be in a black and white marriage. Yeah. That's acceptable. Once again, right. two consenting. Yeah. Right? LGBTQ, consenting. Are there more trans, trans people and their rights? To me, it's like, if you don't like it, I understand. If you don't like gay marriage, I understand. Don't marry a gay person. Problem solved. Yeah, okay. Problem Move solved. About your life. But there are a lot of conversations where we shouldn't be having say. For example, I have a lot of opinions on abortion. You know what my opinion on abortion is? What? Your choice. See? Because I don't have a vagina. If I don't have a vagina, I really shouldn't be able to say anything about it. I have a vagina. Yeah, and so it's your decision. It's juicy. It's your conversation. But so with that being said, I, I, I kind of don't believe in them, but you know. To each but, but that's the thing. And you have the right to feel that way. Because Not, I just feel like us... And as, vote on it. Yeah, us as a people, um, black people in America, um, we got sold on this narrative of these Planned Parenthoods, right, in our communities. And over 50 million black babies have been aborted um, since Planned Parenthood have been in our community. So with That's that being truth. said, is now that we're, we're actually outnumbered by Hispanic people in a country that we built. So I'm kind of like, you know, on the fence with it. I get it's your choice, but now people are just leisurely doing it and it's just like actually that's one of the things people don't understand about abortion people don't realize that the reason that the republican party is so against abortion is not specifically because of the moral issue it's because the people who are getting abortions are specifically their demographic so the people who get abortions the most in the white community are middle class upper middle class white women mm. who are getting these abortions and I didn't know that. and then even on the lower socioeconomic end and so they're constituents aren't being replenished they're being absolutely that's, that, and rate. that's the reason why i feel that way is because it's like our numbers are down in america need more we need more soldiers we need more soldiers for this war the yeah. war that's coming more, more little babies 
You know, little baby like the rapper. We need we more <laughs> we we need more babies. Yeah. We need more babies. I don't know. I don't if think I, we I don't need, need more any, people on this earth. I'm so I'm so confused. That's a real because point. now it's seven, it's almost eight billion people on this earth. A hundred percent. I'm tired of looking at people. No uh -huh, traffic. Honestly, like, where's all these spirits coming from? That's the way I feel. I, been, I, I was told that our spirits come back. Like once we die, we are gonna come back. But it's like, how many new spirits coming up? Because it wasn't always eight billion people here. That's a whole different conversation that gets into <laughs> linear time. Like if time is a linear, oh, I can then, understand. Oh, then okay, the spirits just kept not, coming back. But see, okay. you're thinking of it in a way time. where it's like. There was, uh, like, let's say 100 people, and now there's 8 billion people. There were two people, Adam and Eve, and now there's 8 billion. Where did all these people come from? The concept is there could have been 10 billion people, and then the world started, and then came back. So we that's a I whole different conversation. Yeah. This is why, Woo! see, and this is all emotions. And then there's somebody <laughs> who's going to be like, I know that's true. It's like, what? How do you know that's true? Somebody going to say, cancel that because you know she true? felt some type of way. Exactly. Like, and that's no, what I, I say. Know, man. And it I'm, comes down with religion a lot of times. It comes down to religion. It comes down to how you grew up, where you grew up, environment, 100%. parents, grandparents, race, gender. It comes down to a lot of things that mold each one of us into our thoughts and our beliefs. But that's okay for us to have those beliefs and thoughts, but we just cannot make those beliefs and thoughts factual information when they're not. And with that being said, I agree. I don't. I feel like you're right. <laughs> and that's not a fact, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in to Unapologetically Daphne. Give it up for my guests. Tell them where they can find you at. Find me all across the board at I am Tehran. I A M T E H R A N. My name is Tehran, like the capital of Iran. So if you don't know how to spell my name, just Tehran. watch Fox News. Yeah, yeah. it's going to show up. <laughs> it's going to show up. And check us out and follow me. My name is Daphne Springs. Uh, my website is imdsprings.com. All the information is there. Boom. I'll see you next time. Bye.